name is Fila Beckner, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. And if you like this content, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Join us. That'll be fan dabby double dozer. You know what? Even if you don't really like this content, hit the subscribe button anyway. You know, I said this before. I'll say it again. If you're somewhat ambivalent towards this content, if you can hit the subscribe button, and then, you know, don't be scared of that like button and the uh, the share button. We all like all those buttons. Yes, I'm asking you to press my buttons. Because you know who pressed my buttons? Doctor Who has been pressing my bloody buttons of late, at which I will be screaming about any second now. But I want to show you my appreciation for your support, for your uh, for the subscribing. I give stuff away every week on this channel. What I'm giving away this week is fantastic. It's Doctor Who, The Curse of Fenric. Two... Uh, Two DVD set. Uh, it's got the special edition on it. It's got a movie length version and uh, updated special effects, which I quite like. Most people absolutely hate them, but I quite I quite like them when it, when, it, when they do that. Anyway, all you have to do to win that is uh, subscribe to the channel. Subscribing is the important. That's probably one giving crap away to get you to subscribe. Subscribing is being the important bit, and then uh, in the uh, comment either here on Facebook or Twitter uh, with the hashtag love. Love. All you need is love, baby, and then we'll. Do the giveaway, I think, on Sunday, March, March 8th, when I'm on the TARDIS. So check the video notes for all the instructions on what to do to win that. Also, if you don't win, I actually felt kind of bad that people, you know, lots of people entered and people don't win. There's a free Doctor Who adventure uh, on audio for you to download, starring Nicholas Briggs as a doctor. This is from the mid-80s. It's by a fan group called Audio Visuals, that fan group grew up and became Big Finish, and we know how much we love them. That's there for you. That's also in the video notes. Download it. Enjoy it. Let me know what you think, because it's, it's a really good story. It's called Planet Alive. It's a big season finale. I think a somewhat better season finale here than, uh, uh, than uh, the, one, the one we got. You know, I keep wanting to call it a dumpster fire, but, you know, there's so many things in it that I actually quite liked. You know, I, look, I get it. I get it. I'm one of the only people in the world who like these things. I like the, uh, I did like the Time Lord Cybermen. I thought they were kind of cool. I like the design of them. People hate them. I really like it. You know, what can you say? Vive la différence. But in general, you know, I uh, I hated it <laughs> for all the reasons I'm sure many us, many of us in fandom hated it. So the question I had, I actually had, had it in the middle of the night last night. I nearly got up and recorded the video because I was like, oh, that's such a good question. The question is, does Chris Chibnall feel like a schmuck today? Now, if you don't know what a schmuck is, that is a Jewish word for uh, for dick. Does he feel like a bit of a dick today? Schmuck's a wonderful word. I think it's Yiddish. Yiddish is a fantastic language, which I don't know, but uh, it's very, very expressive. It's a combination of Hebrew and German. It, it grew up, uh, uh, you know, in when when the Jews when there was a massive Jewish center of uh, was uh, was in Europe, but until. You know, Second World War kind of put an end to that, but never mind. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit of a that's a bit of a dark direction for the uh, uh, the video to go. But yeah, Yiddish is a fantastic language because the words just sound what they were. Like yeah, a little bit is uh, uh, abyssal. Yeah, have abyssal. You know, that sounds right to me. Anyway, does Chris Chibnall feel like a schmuck today? Now look, we've all been there. Okay, this has happened to literally every one of us that we thought. Oh, this is going to be great. I am going to look fantastic. This is this is going to work out fantastic. I've got the greatest joke, the best comeback. Ever. I got, everyone's going to look at me and give me a round of applause. And you do it, and pfft, you fall flat on your face. Now, don't pretend that hasn't happened to everybody watching this video. I know it will. If it hasn't happened, well, good for you. I'm, I'm quite envious. It has it's happened to me. Uh, actually, it happened to me quite, quite recently. <laughs> Yeah, I quite. If you've been following my channel, you know about a couple of months ago, which I'm still in trouble for. Uh, I I uh, I smoked my our, our local rabbi in the synagogue uh, <laughs> on on Sabbath. I was like, oh, angrily denounced him, and boy, did that go badly. <laughs> I'm still in trouble for that. Still, he's still not talking to me. Anyway, <laughs> I I I know it does. Chris Chibnall feel like a schmuck today because you know, I bet. Before this season finale went out, he was like, ooh, this is going to be great. Then everyone's going to know just how, how diverse I am. You know, everyone's going to give me such a round of applause. Because Doctor Who, you know, the problem with Doctor Who, it's been so problematic. It's been so, like, white and male. The Doctor could be anything. God, it could be any color, any skin color, um, you know, any gender. See, the truth is, you know, for people who don't live in, like, uh, uh, the Twitterverse, you know, most people don't care. <laughs> you know, like uh, when I meet somebody, I go, oh, my God, what's his skin color? You know, that doesn't really, you know, 
impact. I don't, and I've never met anybody like that. I've really never in my life I've met anybody go, I don't like that person because they think differently to me about gender. You know, that, you know, that just, I've, I've never ever done that. Uh, look, if you know people like that, fine. But I just, uh, honestly, I just don't know that many racists and bigots. But apparently, according to people like Chris Chimmel, we're all racists and bigots and we don't agree with him. So he thought it was going to be fantastic. He thought it was just going to go down incredible. He's like, Doctor Who, you know, I've always loved Doctor Who, but it's always been so problematic by being so white and male. So I'm going to add in a whole bunch of new doctors, maybe infinite doctors but you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna make the first one dark skinned and a woman and i'm gonna make another one dark skinned and a woman i'll put her in the in the william hartnell tardis and it's gonna be so good and then and then we're gonna show them regenerating and it'll be every different uh ethnicity and yeah uh, and skin color and gender will regenerate regen and that way the doctor's no no longer so white and male so problematic and and he thought it was going to be great he thought it was going to be he thought he, he thought he was going to get this round of applause. how brave uh how stunning how stunning how brave i don't think he expected the result the, the reaction that he got so how can i how can i explain the reaction well this is today i'm recording this on wednesday it's a few days in from ground zero and the reaction is, have you ever seen the movie The Producers? It's a pretty good movie, written by um, uh, Mel Brooks from, what was it, early 60s, late 50s? Uh, and uh, no, they, did, they did a revival uh, as, a, uh, as a musical. Anyway, The Producers is, uh, the, essentially the story is about, this, these producers have this idea to raise too much money for a play and make it a play that will definitely, definitely close in the first night. That way they can run away with all the investments because, you know, it's, they, they, it's, a, it's just a way of making it work. And so they come up with the worst play possible. So this was like, again, early 60s, late 50s. So this was like 10, 15 years after World War II. And they come up with, and they use the play Springtime for Hitler. Uh, and so, <laughs> again, you know, people kind of like, you know, people are a little bit more touchy about, about the Second World War. Imagine if it was 15 years ago, you know, it's like, hey, the Second World War was 15 years ago. That's the sort of world it lived in. And have this incredible opening number called Springtime for Hitler. And it's just, it's this incredible uh, it, it just it, it set piece where you know, the song goes springtime for Hitler and uh, Germany. And it's like, incredibly, and then. So they do this opening act. They do it, and it's this incredible number. Yeah, I'm not that big into musicals yet, but it's just it's incredible production values. And then they finish the song, and they're expecting the crowd to go, yeah! But what happens is they pan across the crowd, and everyone's like... Which is, I think, exactly what the audience was like when they saw something. They were like, what? What? You do. They're, they're much like, you know, what uh, Jody Whittaker tried to impersonate David Tennant. <laughs> you know, what? How? Ooh. Okay, so that was that first. And now, uh, it's not going so well, is it? It's going really, you know, even the show media, even the Radio Times, even the Radio Times, which, you know, Radio Times used to be owned by the BBC. I thought they still were owned by the BBC. I was just I was listening to a video last night by Hills versus Babyface. i got to find out. Where that title came from, I love that channel. I'm so into that channel right now. Um, it's, uh, where, where he said, no, it was sold about 10 years ago to, uh, I don't know, to uh, some conglomerate. So, But there was a bit of a very close connection with um, the Radio Times and, and, and the BBC. So Radio Times has often been a bit, well, how can I describe them? Shilly? <laughs> you know, but, yeah, to, uh, like a lot, a lot of the media has been very shilly for this uh, Doctor Who because they just... They really like the idea of taking out the white maleness. They don't like white maleness either. They're all from the same piece, you know. And it's and, you know, it's all because you know, it's all because they got caught um, like coercing and raping a bunch of people so they could get jo bad jobs. So they you know, you know they could get they could be like the third lead in a in a in a crappy sitcom. So you know they ended up so they had to they had to sleep with a series of. 14 producers. So finally they got caught for that. And they went, oh wait, no, no, no. This isn't a Hollywood problem. This, this is a problem. Well, men! Men are the problem! And so, so, yeah, it was a really good bit bit of misdirection. But yeah, so they so they go on this rant that men are evil. And so that's why they, uh, that's why the whole media is so on board. But the media is just not on board with this one. Because trouble is, the ratings have, have, have like fell off a cliff. The British public have gone, and also the American public, oh my god, the American ratings are even worse than the English ones. But the British public just went, yeah, look, you know, I don't really like being lectured to. Uh, I think I'm going to do anything else. Literally anything else. That was what the ratings were like on the, for the season finale, which they plugged. Oh my god, they promoted that relentlessly. Um, 
So, uh, uh, and, and, and literally 600,000 people turned off the TV set rather than watch Doctor Who. They had this really weird show on before it called Country File, which I have no idea why anybody watches it. But 600,000 people, more, more people watched it than Doctor Who. Because as soon as Doctor Who came on, they said, yeah, no, I'm gone. And then, but here's the weird thing. As soon as Doctor Who finished, Antiques Roadshow on Antiques Roadshow. You know, that's not really like the bodyguard. 600,000 people tune back in. Oh, no, Doctor Who's over. Fine. Doctor Who now has the ability to repel viewers. And, you know, we got the, the, the head of drama going, Doctor Who with Piers Wenger. Ah, oh, another one in the brain trust. Uh, Piers Wenger going, Doctor Who is in incredibly good health uh, editorially. What does that mean? <laughs> Can they spell editorially? I, I would love Piers Wenger to, uh, to, to, to find that. So then we got this other bit of news uh, drop last night that both uh, the, the two best bits of this incredibly excruciating era of Doctor Who, the two best bits are leaving. That's Bradley Walsh and by as uh, like a gazillion miles beneath him, uh, what's his name? Ryan uh, Tosin Cobb, who somehow, somehow got himself a... a uh, a part in in an HBO show like just, just I, I got to see that show like who is the character they went yes yes that uh, black hole of charisma you know that guy who sucks energy out of a room I want him for my show I got to see that show so anyway Chris Chibnall I think he was going to go oh everyone's going to be applauding me as being so brave so stunning so diverse oh it's going to be so good ah! and then the reviews came out and the ratings came out and he was like mm. and again we've all been there we've all been there we've all thought this is going to work oh I'm going to look so great I'm going to look fantastic and then you do it and poof, it hits you in the face and you look like a schmuck so here's here's the thing does he okay? Is he in his bubble, and does he realize how bad it, how bad it's gone down? Because the ratings were freaking awful, you know. And there's so many videos like this flying around. Go, I, I think, and he says, "Oh no, I don't, I don't look at fan criticism." There, yeah, of course you do. Because like, come on, Chris, Chrissy, baby, you're one of the most thin-skinned human beings on the entire planet. You literally, you you literally just took people's skin color and gender. To feed your ego, <laughs> yeah. So you go, oh look, I got a, I got a, a, a brown girl doctor. Oh, I got a, I got a, a, a yellow girl doctor. I got, yeah, I know. That. <laughs> it, it was, it was so, it felt so cringy. It was so incredibly cringy. So again, I think, yeah. And also, when we do these things and they hit, uh, hit, hit us in the face, we go, ah, we like to go, no, it's not so bad. But we know, we know deep down that we look like a schmuck with you. So I think Chris Chibnall this morning. Probably knows that he's a bit of a schmuck. So, you know, Chris Jibnall, if you don't feel like a schmuck, you really should do. My name is Sheila Beckin, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. And have yourself a fantastic day.